Fuji Q Highland, situated right at the base of Mount Fuji, has been on my bucket list for ages. And guess what? I finally made it this May. Let me tell you, it was an absolute blast. This place is beyond amazing, with breathtaking views and mind-blowing rides that will leave you screaming for more. If you're an adrenaline junkie or a nature fanatic, this place is an absolute must visit. But before you start making your plans, there are some things you need to know. I won't be giving you the usual generic advice, like arriving early or choosing weekdays to avoid the crowds. Instead, I'll provide you with insights and share my personal experiences, addressing the specific questions that troubled me during the planning process. I'll also let you in on the surprises that caught me totally off guard when I visited. So buckle up and get ready for some real talk. If you're heading to Fuji Q Highland from Tokyo, be prepared for a journey of up to two hours, regardless of which route you choose. In our case, we opted to depart from Shinjuku Highway Bus Terminal. For more options, make sure to visit the Fuji Q's official website. Our trip to Fuji Q from Tokyo was mostly smooth, except for one hiccup. Unlike our previous experiences, where you pay for the bus after the ride, the Fuji Q Express bus requires purchasing tickets in advance, so we had to buy our tickets at the counter. As a result, we missed the bus we intended to take and had to catch the next one, causing a delay of about an hour and arriving at the park around 11 a.m. When we arrived, we decided to purchase return tickets, but to our dismay, all the late tickets for that day were sold out. This meant we had to resort to taking local trains to avoid leaving the park too early at 2 p.m. As a result, the journey back to Tokyo by local trains took us four hours instead of two. So as I mentioned in my previous video about travel tips in Japan, it's important to check ticket availability in advance to avoid such transportation challenges. One more important thing I gotta mention is why we went for the express bus option. The express bus was the best option for us because it was the cheapest, didn't require any transfers like the train options, and was also the fastest in our case. As for the prices, you'll love this. At Fuji Q Highland, entry is absolutely free. Instead of paying an entrance fee, you can purchase tickets for each ride. Now, if you plan on spending the entire day and enjoying almost every attraction, go for the Fuji Q One Day Pass. It gives you unlimited access to all the fun. But if you're looking for a shorter burst of excitement, check out the Afternoon Free Pass. Tickets for Fuji Q Highland Park, including the renowned Super Scary Labyrinth of Fear, were initially available for purchase online through the official website. However, due to issues with the site, we decided to buy our tickets on the spot. The admission ticket cost 6,400 yen per person. As for the labyrinth, unfortunately, when we reached the counter, we were disappointed to find out that all the tickets were sold out. It's a shame because it is a one-of-a-kind experience that delivers spine-tingling thrills like no other. If you don't believe me, just take a look at the pictures online. It's truly terrifying. They also have an interesting system at FujiQ where they use face detection technology. They take a picture of you before each ride to ensure you have a valid ticket. So if you leave the park and return, they simply take another photo of you without needing to show your ticket again. If you're searching for information about fast passes, let me save you the trouble. They are not available for online purchase. We initially wondered about their availability, but upon arrival, we asked the staff and were informed that there isn't a single pass that covers all the roller coasters. Instead, you have to purchase individual passes for each roller coaster if desired. Prices for these passes vary, ranging around 2,500 yen per roller coaster, which is two and a half times more than the cost of the ride itself. Now, let's talk about safety issues at Fuji Q Highland. I must say, their system struck me as rather peculiar. In certain areas, they had three to four staff members conducting safety checks at five different stages before allowing the ride to commence. Interestingly enough, these measures were implemented for rides that didn't appear particularly dangerous. 
On the other hand, for rides that were indeed more intense, they seem to have fewer staff members overseeing safety. What's truly astonishing is that even with this seemingly thorough safety process, I personally experienced the negligence of not being properly fastened not once, but twice. Can you believe it? Despite having visited numerous amusement parks, this was the first time such a mishap occurred. And it turns out my concerns about safety were not unfounded. It seems that one of the highly popular roller coasters, the Dododonpa, had been out of operation for quite a while. This coaster was touted as having the world's fastest acceleration, reaching a mind-boggling 112 miles per hour in just 1.56 seconds, or what the company referred to as super death acceleration. Unfortunately, there were 18 injuries sustained while riding Do Do Don Pa, which included nine incidents of broken bones between December 2020 and August 2021. So the park made the decision to close the ride for a safety overhaul. All right, let's talk about my absolute favorite ride at Fuji Q Highland, Ijaneka. It is now the most intense ride since Dodong Pa is not operating, and it reminds me of my top ride on X2 roller coaster at Six Flags Magic Mountain. Ijaneika has the smallest capacity per hour, only allowing 270 riders to hop on. Blame it on the mandatory shoe removal and extra restraint checks. Since lots of people want to ride it again and again, your best bet is to get on it before 11 a.m. After 12 p.m., the queue time pretty much stays the same throughout the day. So if you're up for a re-ride, make sure to do it before noon. Oh, and here's a little secret. There's a chance that the queue might be short two hours before closing. Let's talk about queues. If you're a frequent visitor to amusement parks, waiting in line is nothing new to you. However, the queues at Fuji Q can rival those at the most popular roller coasters in Six Flags. Be prepared for wait times of up to two and sometimes even three hours for most of the big coasters Unfortunately, there are typically no seating areas or immersive atmospheres with music, themed lighting or interactive stuff like you might find in other amusement parks. It's simply a queue, plain and simple, which is pretty much like in the most of American amusement parks. What was really new to us is that at Fuji Q, they shut down the lines way before the park officially closes. For example, let's say the park closes at 6 p.m., but some rides stop letting people in as early as 5 p.m. And even if you're standing in line when the park closes, you won't be able to ride that coaster. So if you want to make the most out of your visit, I recommend using their official app, it's got real-time info on when the rides close and how long the wait times are. That way, you can plan your day better and make sure you don't miss out on any thrills just because they shut the line early. Wearing contact lenses was a wise decision for me because wearing glasses on the roller coasters is not only inconvenient, but also prohibited at Fuji Q. I came across some comments suggesting that it might be allowed with straps, but I didn't personally verify this information. Now, here's something that caught us off guard while planning. The park hours are way too short. Fuji Q closes really, really early. I mean, it's like the earliest closing park I've ever been to. They shut their gates at 5 p.m. sharp. But be aware that the park hours vary throughout the year with no discernible pattern. So closing time can sometimes extend to 9 p.m., mostly on weekends and national holidays. To wrap up my video, I want to say that despite the challenges, Fuji Q Highland truly exceeded my expectations. The rides were mind-blowing and the park itself is unlike any other I've seen. However, I must admit that I didn't have much time to explore and try other non-extreme roller coasters. I was rushing from one ride to another just to experience every coaster. That's why I highly recommend spending two days at the park if you have enough time. By staying nearby, you can minimize travel time and fully enjoy all that the park has to offer. So make the most of your visit and create unforgettable memories. If you found this video helpful, I would greatly appreciate it if you could give it a thumbs up. 
Your support means a lot to me. Also, if you have any additional tips or suggestions that I might have missed, please leave a comment below. Thank you for watching. And until next time, happy exploring.